date was June 29th, 2000, and I was 12 years old. The world had weathered the Y2K storm some months earlier, but a new threat loomed. The devil, Diablo himself, walked the world once more. Yes, my friends, June 29th, 2000, was the release date of Diablo 2, the second game in the legendary action RPG series from Blizzard Entertainment. At the time, despite my mother's best efforts, I had been playing the first Diablo game for at least a year. It came out way back in late 1996, but I got my hands on it in 1998 or so from a friend of mine in middle school, Daryl. Uh, he managed to get a copy of it through some means or other, and he was blessed with uh, a CD burner, which was a rare thing at the time. So he burned me a copy, and that's how Diablo got into my house. It was an M-rated game for M for Mature, uh, 18 and up, uh, and it would have never ended up in my hands had my mother known. Uh, but of course, there's no ESRB rating uh, stamped on a burned disc, and so it snuck past her filter. <laughs> and uh, I guess she never looked too closely at what I was actually doing uh, on screen. Uh, which I'm very thankful for because I spent many, many joyous hours uh, delving deep beneath the crumbling cathedral in the dark, dreary village of Tristram and slaying Hellspawn by their hundreds, uh, diving ever, ever deeper until eventually I got to Diablo himself and slew him once and for all. Or... So I thought at the time, but Diablo 2 eventually did come out and Diablo was back. And by that time, my mother was wise to the violence of the series and she wouldn't let me buy Diablo 2. Again, you must remember I was 12 at the time. Uh, and so <laughs> instead, on June 29th, 2000, I went over to one of my best friend's places, Andrew's house. Uh, his mom was cool, and she let him buy Diablo 2. And uh, we proceeded to spend hours and hours and hours uh, slaughtering many more uh, demons. Uh, and this time, not just below the cathedral in Tristram, but out in the wilds of Sanctuary, in the Blood Moor, in the deserts of Luke Gulain, in the jungles of Kurast. Uh, and those are my first memories of Diablo 2, which would become one of uh, my most favorite games and one of the most formative games in my history. Uh, a couple of years later, my mom finally relented, <laughs> well, I want to say when I got to high school, uh, and despite Diablo 2 still bearing a mature rating, um, which is actually, I guess it's 17 and up. I thought it was 18, but it's 17 and up. Anyway, she relented and let me buy Diablo 2 for myself, at which time um, I bought something that looked very much like this. In fact, I think exactly like this. This is the Diablo 2 battle chest and uh, it includes the base game as well as the expansion pack lord of destruction as well as a strategy guide back when those were all the rage uh and i'm unboxing this here today and i share all of this long story with you because it is the 20th anniversary of diablo 2. Uh, as of the time of filming, it's a couple days after the 20th anniversary, actually. But um, 
I hadn't planned to make a video like this, uh, but when, you know, when the 20th anniversary rolled around, I, I spent some time thinking about how much uh, I love this series and how much I played this game. Diablo 2 and its expansion uh, basically defined my gaming through high school. <laughs> I played the crap out of it so many bail runs, uh, so many hours invested in <laughs> finding my full Immortal King set and building the Enigma Rune Word and all that stuff. This might not mean anything to some of you, but others of you might be, you know, nodding your head and and uh, it might be bringing back some, some good memories. So uh, a little while back, I actually found this copy of the Diablo 2 battle chest uh, in a thrift store. This is not my original copy. Uh, I don't have the original box or strategy guide anymore, although I do still have the original discs for my battle chest. But uh, I, I found this at a Salvation Army for five dollars, as you can see. The price tag's still on there. <laughs> Twice, for some reason. Uh, and at five bucks, how could I say no? Uh, so I snatched it up. I have not looked inside, but it does feel like everything's in here. I hope it is. Uh, I don't think it's sealed. Um, Oh, you know what? It is. This is sealed, you guys. This has never been opened. I didn't even realize that. I just picked it up for a lark because I saw it there. And I just kind of wanted to have it. And it actually sat on my shelf here for quite a while. This was a while ago. Um, just waiting for, I don't know, the right moment. And it felt like this was it. The 20th anniversary of Diablo 2. So... I don't know if this has any collector's value. They sold a lot of copies of Diablo 2. Uh, millions. In fact, um, if we turn this over, one of the quotes on the back of the box is over 7 million sold <laughs> as of the time that this battle chest was published. So, um, well, maybe this was opened. It looks like this, it's hard to tell if this was in fact opened or if this is just a uh, you know, age and dust, it looks like, has lifted up that sticker. Anyway, uh, the box itself is in, is in pretty good shape. It's a little rough around the edges. You can see there's some wear, you know, but uh, considering it's 20, well, this is probably closer to 18 years old. Uh, it's looking pretty good. <laughs> so we're going to take a little trip down memory lane here. We'll check this out, we'll open it up, we'll look at all the stuff inside, and then, if I'm in the mood, <laughs> and if this doesn't run too long, I may actually put a little bit of Diablo 2 gameplay on the end of this video, uh, just for fun, in case you've never seen the game. You know, you can see it in action. Maybe we'll do some of that. So, uh, the front here, as you can see, bears uh, Diablo 2 strategy guide from uh, Brady Games, it looks like. Brady Games, Diablo 2 strategy guide, and uh, the Lord of Destruction expansion, uh, which came out in 2001, uh, almost exactly a year after the base game. M, rated M for mature. Rightfully so. <laughs> Honestly, as a 10-year-old or whatever I was, I had no business playing <laughs> the original Diablo. Uh, that game, despite its, you know, relatively primitive pixelated graphics, uh, it was gory as hell. Like the butcher's room, probably not fit for a 9 or 10-year-old. <laughs> uh, there was just... Yeah, it was bad <laughs> in retrospect. It was like full frontal nudity and stuff as well. Like it was um, not a game for a, a child, but but again, like I say, like I do have very fond memories of it, and uh, I don't think it did me any harm in the long run. I don't know. Maybe you can psychoanalyze me. Maybe you, maybe you disagree, but I 
I look back on playing Diablo and Diablo 2 very, very fondly. The complete award-winning Diablo saga. That's an interesting thing to say, because I don't think this contains Diablo 1. Uh, so I don't know how they can claim that it's a, a complete uh, Diablo saga, but anyway. Some of the desert gameplay here, some of the ice caves that was in the expansion, Act 5, Tyrael, one of the ar archangels. This is from the introductory cinematic. Got some choice quotes on the back of the box here. What does it say? Game of the Year from the Academy of Interactive Sciences in 2001. Over 7 million sold. Challenging, exciting, and horribly addictive, says Newsweek. I can definitely uh, agree with that. Why can't I quit, said Greg Fortune of Computer Gaming World. <laughs> the uh, box blurb for Diablo, uh, Diablo 2, pardon me, says here, Evil has survived. Diablo has resumed his nefarious scheme to shackle humanity into unholy slavery, this time by setting out to free the other prime evils, Mephisto and Baal. Storm a vast underworld of twisted dungeons and uncharted wilderness on an epic quest to put a final end to the Lord of Terror. Five bold hero classes, four expansive realms, and enhanced Battle.net support. <laughs> Indeed it did. Then over here, for the Lord of Destruction expansion, which added the fifth act to the game, says destruction awaits. Return to a world where evil corrupts, vengeance consumes, and destruction awaits. With two all-new character classes, that was the assassin and the druid that they added, a complete new act, and thousands of new items, Diablo II Lord of Destruction offers a whole new world of powers to be mastered and evils to be conquered. Two new hero classes, complete new act, and expanded arsenal and stash. Also just a variety of quality of life improvements and such. Uh, they increase the resolution from a blurry 640 by 480 to a slightly less blurry 800 by 600. And a strategy guide includes the official Diablo 2 Battle Chess strategy guide from Brady Games. The ultimate guide includes the most current strategies for both Diablo 2 and Lord of Destruction. Yeah, well, I hate to say it, but uh, those strategies are now about 18 years out of date. The game has, of course, been supported and patched many times uh, over the years. Uh, they put out a patch not that long ago. Well, relatively speaking, like in the last few years, I think they put out a patch for the game. Which is quite something when you think about it. <laughs> quite something. Um, still as good as ever. Still as good as ever. I know you guys are probably itching to get into this thing and see what's inside, but you know what? I'm just enjoying reading this stuff. Why don't we read the, the system requirements, guys, for a laugh. PC single-player system requirements. Windows XP. So at the time that this battle chest came out, we were on to XP. Pentium 233 or higher. <laughs> 64 megabytes of RAM. 1.5 gigs of hard drive space. I remember that being an immense amount when I first got the game. A 4X CD-ROM drive, DirectX compatible video card, optional 800 by 600 resolution mode is not recommended for systems near the minimum specifications for RAM or processor speed. And if you wanted multiplayer, Oh boy, guys, you needed a 28.8 kilobits per second or faster modem. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. 
They also recommended 128 megs of RAM for multiplayer, or even 256 for four-player multiplayer. Holy cow. They must think we're rich or something. And enhanced graphics support was available with a 3D card. At least 8 megs of video memory must support uh, through OpenGL, Rave, or 3DFX. There are actually some, a handful of, I believe, 3DFX exclusive effects. Um, 3DFX, for those of you who don't know, was a, um, a competing company uh, to NVIDIA and well, what is now AMD, but was then ATI, the Radeon series by ATI. Um, 3DFX was known for their voodoo cards, which were actually very, very um, forward-looking for the time and, and quite powerful, but uh, for various reasons, they could not cut it. They dropped out of the 3D accelerator race. The company went under in the early 2000s, I want to say. Okay, let's open this up. I, I hate to break the seal, foul the sanctity, if you will, of this, this box set, but, uh, you know, in the name of nostalgia, let's do it. There we go. Probably just lost $20 of value. Again, I have no idea how much this is worth, if anything. <laughs> Probably not much. And, you know, if it were pristine, you know, uh, maybe I'd be a little more hesitant to open it all up, but it's a little dog-eared, you know. does look brand new. This looks like it's never been opened. This is pristine. The <laughs> Brady Games Diablo 2 Ultimate Strategy Guide. Uh, it's thick. There's quite a bit to it there. Look at that. It is uh, not full color. It is... Uh, black and white, but we'll take a closer look at that in a moment. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to cover up the game serial here because I might have use for this. I might even to this day. Uh, this is the game key, uh, the CD key. It says here Diablo 2 CD key. Uh, Diablo 2 originally shipped on, I want to say, four discs. Maybe it was three. Three discs. Um, I'll take the discs out in a second, but... Um, this must not come in... Uh, or this is not the same uh, battle chest that I purchased back in the day, because my discs uh, come in a jewel case, whereas these come in just... These black paper envelopes. So, this must have been a later release. Maybe this is newer than 18 years. This could have been released at any point in the last... I don't know. Well, I, I don't know if they're still making the Diablo Battle Chest, but they did for quite a while after the fact. This may only be a decade old. It's, it's hard to know. Um, I don't see anything in here that would date it one way or the other. There's disc three, which I believe was the cinematics disc. And uh, 
And then here's the Lord of Destruction disc. And once again, I'm gonna just cover up the CD key there, but you can, you can see the disc, kind of. I'll, I'll pop a disc out just to show you. We've also got World of Warcraft guest passes. Okay, so that tells us something. Um, this does give us a date uh, because, you know, um, WoW came out when? 2004? So, this is at least after 2004 sometime. Um, got guest pass keys here. I don't know if you guys want them. If someone wants them, you can take them. I don't think they're good for anything anymore. I think it's actually, you can get the game for free now anyway. You can play in level 20 for free, so it's, it's a moot point. But anyway. And then, we've also got the Diablo 2 manual. And the Lord of Destruction manual. And you know, no, now that I'm thinking about it, nothing else there. Now that I'm thinking about it, uh, I'm pretty darn sure my version of the battle chest that I bought way back when actually came with a copy of Diablo 1 as well, because I have a copy of D1 in a jewel case. A legit copy, not the burned copy that my friend Daryl gave me. <laughs> and I think that came in the battle chest with Diablo 2. So this is um, almost certainly a later release of the battle chest. Uh, but how much later, I, I do not know. Uh, let's just pop out, I don't know, whatever. Disc 3 here. So here we have disc 3. Stick it out the envelope here. It's got a neat red and black design on it. Doesn't say anything about being the cinematics disc like I thought I remembered it saying, but again, this is probably later pressing, so maybe they just didn't put that on there. And you know what, guys? We do have an indication of when this battle chest was published. This particular one. Because so it says on here, Windows XP, Vista, and Macintosh. So, uh, Windows Vista came out, uh, I want to say around 2007 or 8, thereabouts. And so that uh, dates this to uh, around that time. But you will notice it does not say Windows 7. So, I don't remember when Windows 7 came out. I want to say 2011-ish, maybe? So, that places this sometime between 2007-ish and 2011-ish. Those numbers are probably not quite precise, but in, the, in that time frame. So, this is probably closer to, you know, 10 to 12 years old than it is to 18. Um, but uh, it's not quite as old as I'd originally thought it might be. Still though, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. That's good to know. We have a little bit of information about it anyway. When this particular one was published. Um, I'm just going to show you guys the... Uh, the uh, expansion set disc here, just for funsies, because it's got a different design on it, different pattern, and once again, for Windows XP or Vista, the disc stamped on it here says 2001, but that's probably just what it said on the original disc, you know, because that is when the game came out. The expansion, that is. Okay, let's uh, let's take a quick peek at the manuals here, just for fun. 
And then we'll we'll take a look at that strategy guide because I think that'll be more interesting. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Getting started on PC requires an IBM PC or 100% compatible computer. Uh, why don't we read this bit of flavor text here? This is called The Adept. Initiate, part two. It's subtitled. I have walked the paths, the shadowed roads that led to terror's breast. I have plumbed the depths of hatred's womb and scaled destruction's crest. For every secret left unveiled, for every power learned, I'd sell the remnants of my soul, regardless how it burned. And still I sought a higher wisdom few could have attained. Though I found it, it would leave me broken, damned, and drained. For now I find this power gained is more unto a curse. My spirit burns with every spell and each irreverent verse. Despite this strength and knowledge earned, I've paid a heavy toll. Never should have traded power for my own immortal soul. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, it's so, like, straight-faced in its edginess, and it just embraces it fully, and I love it. Uh, attributed to C. Vincent Metzen. Uh, I suspect this was written by Chris Metzen, who was a, I don't think he is still at Blizzard, but uh, he was a, a core member of Blizzard back in the day. Or maybe they just named it after him because they thought that would be funny. I don't know. Yes, my friends, Diablo 2 was... Uh, it was heavy metal, you know, it was, it took the, the evil and the darkness and it just turned it up to 11. And in some ways it was very straight faced about it. You know, it took itself quite seriously, but in other ways you could tell there was a tongue in cheekness to it because it really, it really went for it. Like I, I recently watched uh, an interview actually with uh, Max Schaefer, one of the original co-creators of Diablo, uh, and along with his brother Eric Schaefer and uh, David Brevik. They uh, were sort of some of the original masterminds behind Diablo. Uh, and in this interview, he was talking about how, how the game was in, intended, it was designed to be shocking. It was designed to push the boundaries of what people were comfortable with and okay with in games. That applied to both Diablo 1 and 2, but 2 took what 1 did and just, yeah, turned the dial to 11. Oh, wow. There's, guys, this is the lost art of, of game manuals. You just don't get these anymore unless you buy, you know, a, a specific, like, collector's edition of a game uh, designed for this sort of um, experience, you know, you know, for collectors. Then you might get a physical manual, but these manuals, they've got, look at all this stuff, there's a plethora of information about game systems here, but also just about the classes. You can learn about the the Amazon. You can learn about the Barbarian. There's a bunch of flavor stuff in here as well. I miss those days. I miss the days when I would buy a game. Oh, all the skills in here. Look at them all. I miss the days when I would buy a game and I didn't have a lot of money at the time, of course, because I was just a young lad 
And so that would be my one game for months. Who knows, you know? Um, and so I'd have to wring every last bit of joy out of it that I could. And I would spend hours poring over these manuals, reading every last word, um, because uh, it was just cool. I would immerse myself in those worlds, you know. A far cry from the the days of, uh, you know, blowout Steam sales and free games on the Epic Store that we have today. You know, it's not necessarily worse now. It's just different. We have a an embarrassment of riches when it comes to games these days. And I do think that it makes each individual game feel a bit less special. But it could also just be the nostalgia talking. I don't know. You can see it talks all about the different weapon classes here. Different types of weapons. A big long description of each one. Let's read about wands. Although their usefulness in combat is often underestimated, these skillfully wielded wands cause damage similar to that of clubs and maces. For the most part, wands are used for the enchantments they bestow upon the wielder, rather than for combat. Necromancers are commonly observed wielding these inscribed and decorative rods. High-ranking priests of the dead are rumored to store magical energies within these artifacts by marking them with powerful and arcane symbols. You know, I have to attribute uh, a lot of my, <laughs> I would say my teenage aesthetic to Diablo and Diablo 2. Uh, I, around the same time in early high school, was getting into metal. Uh, and so that was very much my scene, and I still consider myself to this day a, a metalhead. I still listen to a lot of metal. Um, but I was just really into just, just darkness, <laughs> just edgy stuff. Uh, it was a fun time, you know, but Diablo 2 uh, 100% fit into and probably informed that aesthetic of mine. <laughs> Uh, in, a, in a serious way, you know, it, it led me down the dark path, and, uh, and I just, I love this stuff. I still love it, like the atmosphere of Diablo 2, uh, to this day, is unmatched. Um, just the graphics hold up, you know, I mean, they're, they're primitive, they're pixel art, basically, but they still look good, you know? Um, and the music, oh my gosh, the soundtrack. If you've never listened to the Diablo 2 soundtrack, do yourself a favor. Go listen to it right now. It's on Spotify. It's all over YouTube. Uh, Matt Ullman is the name of the composer. And he put together such a masterpiece, especially the stuff in the early game. I love uh, the, the track Wilderness. Uh, I love the Rogue Encampment track. Uh, and I love the stuff from the desert as well, like Luke Gulane and all that. Uh, but the whole thing is just, uh, it's brilliant. So many textures of acoustic instruments and, uh, you know, just creepy sound effects. and So good. Let's read another piece from C. Vincent Metzen, shall we? What fires burn within my heart? and force me to contend with the perils that await me at this tragic journey's end. I have walked the roads that lead to hell. I have challenged all but fate. I have fought and bled and carried on just to reach this final gate. And now the task before me looms, this dire deed undone. I shall make my stand against the three until the battle is won. What fear or wound could ever still this last defiant cry? 
as I stand against the shadow neath the endless burning sky. Oh, C. Vincent Metzen, you understand my, my teenage heart. Uh, this is, you know, of course, a reference to fighting the, the prime evils in Diablo. But there's more stuff in here. The ex libris horatrum. The custodians of hatred. Lut Gulain, the binding of destruction. The Awakening and the Wanderer. The Wanderer, spoilers, is the hero from Diablo 1 who, to save the world from Diablo, he takes the soul stone in which Diablo is imbued, is captured basically at the end of Diablo 1, and <laughs> shoves it into his own head. He just jams it into his forehead, uh, and in doing so, attempts to make himself the mortal prison of the, one of the prime evils. You know, in his hubris, he thought he could contain the prime evil for all eternity, bind it within himself, but of course, Diablo is too strong, and so he corrupts the Wanderer slowly, turning him into a, a shell of his former self, until eventually he is consumed uh, and Diablo bursts forth. There's a map of Sanctuary, the world, the setting. Some of the beasties that you might find. But we'll see a lot more of that in just a moment, because after we take a very quick flip through the, uh, the expansion manual here, this one has more. <laughs> more <laughs> awesome text here, not by uh, C. Vincent Metzen, but by, inspired by the Wanderer, it says here, from the Exeter book. Okay. Oh, I wonder if this is actually a real poem. This actually might be a real thing. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. We've got some more skills, we've got some more uh, character classes, like the Jurids in here. Uh, we've got probably some more items somewhere in here. Enemies. Good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> Look at that quality. Beautiful. Ah, oh, goodness me, I'm enjoying this way too much. I have no idea if you guys are, but whatever. <laughs> this is like as much for me as it is for you. Holy crap, there's so much in here. Uh, this obviously covers the basics as well as the character classes. And, uh, and then it looks like it provides walkthroughs of the whole main story and the side quests as well as tables on every enemy. It gives their special attributes, where they're found, different variants. So good. So good. Hit point range for each creature type. Resistances, special attacks. I'll turn this around so you can see it a little better, and we'll just uh, we'll take a quick cruise through. We don't have to, I'm not gonna give it a detailed look, but I would like to have a little time to play the game with you guys. So this looks like a bunch of skills for the different classes. These are necromancer skills, poison and bone. This is a bone wall over here. Level at which you learn it prerequisites. A lot of this is completely outdated now just because uh, they have changed the skill trees a bit. They've uh, moved, you know, shuffled things around. They've, they gave them synergies at one point and I think they got rid of those again. And the game has evolved over time. 
but not nearly as much as like a modern game evolves, you know? Uh, these days it's all about games as a service, right? Uh, and so, you know, you play a game and it changes dramatically over the course of several years while it's supported. It didn't used to be like that. Games would change, but not dramatically. It was mostly small tweaks and patches, but over its lifetime, uh, Diablo 2 did gain uh, some extra content. They added quite a few more uh, rune words, uh, unique items, as well as boss encounters like the uber bosses uh, and things like that. I remember there was a whole thing with the Stones of Jordan and just a bunch of stuff. So, you know, Diablo 2 was a more, more of a living game than than others of its time. And it was supported for much, much longer uh, than, than most. The Paladin. Righteous Holy Warrior. If you somehow never played Diablo 2 and you are a fan of this type of game, the isometric action RPG, uh, you owe it to yourself to play this game. I think you can still purchase it from Blizzard on Battle.net. I don't know how much, maybe 20 bucks or something. Uh, totally worth it. It's thoroughly enjoyable to this day. Uh, it's aged well, honestly. <laughs> that assassin. Yikes. Yikes. That loincloth situation. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was a different time. <laughs> Late 90s, early 2000s. We'll say it was a different time. Slightly. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know. But, uh... What are we into now? The quests. So this goes through all the different quests and story pieces. The game was divided into four acts initially, each in a different region of the world, and then the expansion added a fifth act. Um, and then within each act you had uh, basically sort of a main quest that took you through, uh, and a series of side quests as well, but never that many. Only ever about eight, if I recall correctly, per act. So it was actually, you know, the scope of the questing and such was fairly limited, but the, the meat of the game was in the exploration of the zones, which were, of course, randomly generated each time you play, so quite a bit of replayability there. And then, you know, the, the hunt for the items. It was all about getting those, those unique items that were sort of build-defining in many cases, like the Enigma rune word was uh, made from runes that dropped and you had to put a certain combination of runes in a socketed item and then and then it would uh, it would create this unique item that conferred the teleport ability which is normally a sorceress only ability but it would confer that ability to any class incredibly powerful uh, as I said build defining uh, all kinds of tables appendices back here <laughs> affixes and suffixes for various magic items that could randomly drop. Amazing. Just awesome. And there's the back. Certainly a relic of a bygone era before there was a comprehensive wiki for every game, you know. All right, well, guys, we've had our fun looking through this battle chest, this Diablo 2 battle chest, let's play a bit of the game. I want to show it to you guys. I want you to see it and hear it. Let's go play some Diablo 2. Here we are on the main menu of 
Diablo to Lord of Destruction expansion. The backdrop here depicts Haragath, which is the fortress city of the barbarians. Uh, that's your home base in Act 5, basically. But uh, we are not going to play Act 5. We're going to start a new game. Let's create a new character. So we have our classes to choose from. There's seven of them with the expansion classes. The Amazon, who is primarily ranged. The Assassin, who's good at the martial arts. The Necromancer, who uses the power of the dead. The Barbarian, who's very angry. The Paladin, who's a stodgy, holy warrior. <laughs> uh, the Sorceress, who harnesses the powers of the elements. And of course, the Druid. Very edgy he is. Who harnesses the powers of the wild. Uh, what are we feeling like, guys? I'm a sorceress. The sorceress is pretty cool. As it says here, she has mastered the elemental magics. Fire, lightning, and ice. So we get all kinds of cool spells. She's not super durable, uh, you know, without her magic, but uh, she's a fun class. And we are going to call her... Um, <laughs> Ember. Because <laughs> I'm not feeling creative right now. All right, let's go. Good day. Good day indeed, Warriv. Oh, greetings, stranger. I'm not surprised to see your kind here. Many adventurers have traveled this way since the recent troubles began. No doubt you've heard about the tragedy that befell the town of Tristram. Well, some say that Diablo, the Lord of Terror, walks the world again. I don't know if I believe that. But a dark wanderer did travel this route a few weeks ago. He was headed east to the mountain pass guarded by the rogue monastery. Maybe it's nothing, but evil seems to have trailed in his wake. You see, shortly after the wanderer went through, the monastery's gates to the pass were closed, and strange creatures began ravaging the countryside. Until it's safer outside the camp and the gates are reopened, I'll remain here with my caravan. I hope to leave for Loot Gulane before the shadow that fell over Tristram consumes us all. If you're still alive, then, I'll take you along. You should talk to Akara, too. She seems to be the leader of this camp. Maybe she can tell you more. So, Warriv is basically just a, a caravan uh, trader. Uh, I like him, I think he's a fun character. Uh, I like his voice actor too. In fact, most of the voice acting in this game is really good. The sound design overall is excellent as well. You can hear the classic rogue encampment music. And the rain is really pretty as well, actually. Somebody needs to make like a... Just 12 hours of... Diablo 2 Rogue Encampment looping ambience track. <laughs> I'd listen to it while studying. Uh, so, all kinds of scary stuff happening. Dark wanderers, Diablo walking the earth, terrible creatures appearing, and the rogues closing the gates to the pass. Moreve said that we should go talk to Akara. And uh, she's down here. Let's, let's chat with her. Greetings, young sorceress. It is good to see more of your kind at work in the world these dark days. In my opinion, the world needs more women to fight against the great shadow. But I am forgetting my manners. I am Akara, High Priestess of the Sisterhood of the Sightless Eye. I welcome you, traveler, to our camp. 
but I'm afraid I can offer you but poor shelter within these rickety walls. You see, our ancient sisterhood has fallen under a strange curse. The mighty citadel, from which we have guarded the gates to the east for generations, has been corrupted by the evil demoness Andariel. I still can't believe it. But she turned many of our sister rogues against us and drove us from our ancestral home. Now the last defenders of the sisterhood are either dead or scattered throughout the wilderness. I implore you, stranger, please help us. Find a way to lift this terrible curse, and we will pledge our loyalty to you for all time. There is a place of great evil in the wilderness. Kasha's rogue scouts have informed me that a cave nearby is filled with shadowy creatures and horrors from beyond the grave. I fear that these creatures are massing for an attack against our encampment. If you are sincere about helping us, find the dark labyrinth and destroy the foul beasts. May the great eye watch over you. Okay. So we've been given a quest. Let's check the quest log. The Den of Evil. Look for the den in the wilderness outside the rogue's camp. So I think that we will do that quest for this gameplay portion of this video. I think that would be a, a good thing to do and a good introduction to Diablo 2 if you've never seen it before and probably very nostalgic if you have played it. There's all kinds of other uh, inhabitants in this camp. This is supposed to be the camp where the rogues basically got, uh, you know, forced to after they were chased out of their monastery by, as you heard, the demoness Andariel. Uh, many of the sisters of the Sightless Eye were corrupted, but some of them escaped, and this is where they're sort of uh, eking out their squalid existence, I guess. This is Charcy. She's the blacksmith. We won't talk to her right now, though. Cassia, she's sort of the the military mind here. Eventually she'll let you uh, hire on rogues as companions. So it looks like the way out of town is to the southwest. So let's go. We've got our work cut out for us. We have to find the den of evil. Evil beware. Evil beware. <laughs> so as a sorceress, uh, we mostly use spells, but in the early game, uh, you kind of hit stuff. Oh, that was very rude. You hit stuff with your staff. <laughs> Not exclusively. I mean, I do have a firebolt on the right click. Just like that. But it's not very powerful either. Hmm. Like the sounds of the the creek. Hmm, some armor. Ah, oh, we can't use it. <laughs> Take strength fifteen. Awkward. Oh, a skill shrine. Uh, that will make our skills better, I think, for a short amount of time, but not super useful because we only have one skill, and that is our fireball. Firebolt, pardon me. Hmm. Buckler, can't really make use of that because our staff is two-handed. Not very useful. Now, generally speaking, if we follow the path, uh, we will make our way to the Den of Evil. So, why don't we just follow this main path? Hopefully we get there eventually. These areas are randomized, so the layout is different every time you play, which is pretty cool. It's a mechanic that goes all the way back to you know, the old dungeon crawlers like Rogue and those. 
path splits here. I don't know which route goes to the den of evil. Let's try this one. I'm a sucker for random level generation, though. I like novelty. So these guys, the Fallen, there's the weeniest demons. And they, uh... Oh, what's happening here? Oh, we've got a, a helper. It's Flavia, you guys. Turn back. I can tell that you need more experience to fight safely in the next wilderness. Oh, so, so. You should complete Akara's quest before okay. venturing further. We get it. Search for the den in the wilderness closer to camp. So this is the the path towards the next zone. Which means we picked the wrong fork in the path. The other way probably goes to the den. Where was that? Here. Yes, we are pretty weak sauce right now. There we go, we've leveled up. Uh, with our level up, we can expend some points on various things. And honestly, uh, energy is sort of one of our more important stats because it gives us mana, but I'm gonna put the points into strength because we do need to be able to wear some armor. And this socketed leather armor doesn't look too bad to start with. So let's just dump those points in there and put the armor on. Changes our appearance, as you can see. Unlike modern games where your appearance perfectly reflects your gear, uh, that's not the case here because they're using pre-rendered 2D sprites. So you kind of just have armor like weight classes. So, uh, you know, it's sort of vaguely reflects what you're wearing <laughs> but this looks almost more like chainmail whereas we're wearing leather uh what were we doing oh we have a skill a new skill point that we can invest so we've got some skill trees here we've got fire spells uh we've uh got firebolt already uh which we actually haven't unlocked yet we just are granted the skill by our staff so if we were to get rid of this staff, we'd lose the Firebolt ability, <laughs> which is a little bit goofy. Um, but uh, we could put a point in uh, to unlock it permanently. We could learn Warmth, which increases mana regen. That's pretty handy. We could learn Charged Bolt. Or we could learn Ice Bolt. They're all pretty handy. Ice Bolt is nice because it keeps enemies uh, at bay. It slows them. Frozen Armor is also useful. What do you guys feel like? How about... Uh, oh, let's do some Ice Bolt. Why not? And let's uh, put Ice Bolt on our right click. Here we are, at the Den of Evil. We've got some unfortunate soul here, the remains anyway, of some unfortunate soul. I love how the, uh, the rain leaves little ripples in this pond, and the tree is actually reflected in the pond, even though I'm sure there's no shaders going on here. It's probably just a texture. But I just I love the the dreary atmosphere of these early areas. So you can see how they get slowed, and then we hit them and they explode into into uh, ice chunks, and melt away. Mana regen shrine. I don't really need that right now because our mana is full, but it'll be helpful once we start fighting stuff. Shall we head into the den? Kill all the monsters in the den. Okay. 
Another skill shrine. Oh, of course, that replaces our mana regen shrine. Here's an unfortunate dead rogue. So these ice bolts are a lot slower than our fire bolt. But that's okay. Some more armor. Superior quilted. Defense 13, not as good as the leather armor that we're wearing. It probably wasn't that critical for us to uh, learn Ice Bolt, you know, to slow enemies, uh, because... The enemies here are not very fast, so so the fallen get raised by the shaman. We have to kill the shaman so that he can't raise them anymore. Stop it! Go away! I can't carry anymore. Oh, we're already full. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we can drop some crap that we don't need. Bolts and arrows, pretty useless. The bow we'll keep because it's magical, so. Once identified, it'll sell for a pretty penny. Groove into the dungeon music. Ooh, we've got lots of guys around here. So we're just gonna fight our way through the Yikes. There we got him. We're almost out of mana. So this is where warmth would be helpful. Um, but we also picked up some mana potions, so we can just drink one of those. And we're back in action. Oops. <laughs> Fall and keep taking shots for the gargantuan beasts. Probably also worth drinking a healing potion there. So our weapon actually doesn't do that much damage. Our staff does one to five, I guess. Uh, why don't we use this identify scroll on the short bow? So it does actually a bit less, one to four, but it'll work at a range. Uh, and I can pick up some arrows there. Oh, and some leather armor. Is that any better? Nope, same defense, but actually it's identical. They both have 15 armor and they're both socketed. The sockets mean that we can put gems or runes into it if we happen to find some. So we're just gonna roll with this bow for a bit, even though it's not really the ideal item for the sorceress. But it's probably better than our, our stat. So many crappy throwing knives. I can't carry anymore. We don't need crappy throwing knives. <laughs> We've got low quality throwing knives, damaged throwing knives, and crude throwing knives all in one spot. I'll get rid of this crappy buckler too. We don't need it. Ooh, some magical quilted armor. Oh, we leveled up again, you guys. What shall we put points into? Well, again, as a sorceress, energy is pretty useful. It'll give us some more mana, so let's let's do that. And for skill, oh, what the heck? Why don't we just show off some of the other skills? Let's uh, take a look at Charge Bolt. That way you can see them all. This one's sort of a random squiggle of oh interesting you see that guy got raised that means there's a these guys over here charge bolt is quite powerful on larger groups of enemies when you just kind of spam it where yes not so great on single targets because it's hard to hit things precisely with it
Put that. Get that there, shaman. So these fallen aren't getting raised forever. Wonder how we're doing for arrows. I think we're doing just fine. Ooh, some boots. That's nice. Although they're just damaged boots. It's better than nothing. Oh, there's another shaman about. Where's the other shaman? Gosh. Where is he raising them from? Yes, something's raising all of them. Ooh, a fleeting shrine. That means that stamina is no longer an issue. Seriously though, where is that shaman? Ooh, got a unique zombie here. Is it who I think it is? Yes, it's the classic corpse fire. He's always in the den of evil. But uh, there are also random monsters that spawn. Uh, random. Ah, uh, there he is. Sneaky. Random named monsters that spawn with random abilities. So those fancier looking beasties have uh, usually special uh abilities about them so undead spectral hit i can't even remember what spectral hit does but i think it makes them do more damage or maybe steals mana something like that so i'm going to switch back to my ice bolt here just because it's a little better for shooting stuff single targets really fire bolts probably the best here but these guys are pretty slow to begin with, so we don't really gain much by... Oof. Wow, this guy doesn't want to go down. We don't gain much by... Oops, I did not mean to waste a light healing. I could have used a miner, but that's okay. Yeah, we don't stand to gain too much by slowing them. So now that we've dealt with all of Corpse Fire's minion friends... Just kite him a bit. Got him. And he dropped us a rare buckler and a magical javelin. Uh, we can probably drop some of this junk. Let's get rid of those javelins. Make a little extra space before we have to head back to town. And uh, we'll drop the superior quilted armor. So, uh, we should identify this quilted armor just in case it's any good. Nope. Strictly worse than our leather armor. Disappointingly. Oh. Quest log. That means that we are very close to killing everything in here. Five monsters remaining in the den of evil. Probably all those stupid fallen that got raised over here. Yeah. I forgot that they still counted towards the total. Stop moving, guys. Let me end you. Here's our last guy. There we go. This cave has been purged of evil. <laughs> She's so righteous. I love how these light shafts come down and the lighting changes. It's fun. Okay, well, we could run all the way back to town, or we could use one of Diablo's staple uh, spells Town Portal. Let's do that. I love the effect and the sound of the town portal. They look so good. If we check our quest log here, return to Akara for a reward. 
Ooh, listen, we've got nighttime ambience. Got the rain. We can hear frogs as well. I wasn't joking when I said I'd listen to a 12 hour ambience track of this. It probably exists. I should check YouTube. Maybe it's already a thing. Never thought to check. Let's go talk to Akara. You have cleansed the den of evil. You've earned my trust and may yet restore my faith in humanity. Your reward is training in the skill of your choice. Great. Done. So for our troubles, we get an extra skill point, which let's put it into warmth. Get a little extra mana regen, shall we? And if we check our quest log, quest completed. Of course, there are many more uh, monsters to slay, quests to complete, places to explore. In fact, Cassia has something to tell us here. Uh, she wants to tell us about Cold Crow, <laughs> one of the uh, rogue sisters who was corrupted. And you have to go to a graveyard and fight her. But I think uh, for now, we're going to end this here. We have, uh, you know, done the, uh, the classic Diablo stuff, killed some monsters, went into a cave, cleansed the den of evil. Uh, and if this was your first time seeing the game, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you know, it looks a bit dated these days, certainly, but I think there's still something really appealing and kind of gritty about the low-res pixelated uh, art. Um, I, I really do enjoy the aesthetic, even to this day. And if you played Diablo 2 back Hello. in the day... <laughs> shush, Kasha, <laughs> go away. No, I don't want to talk to you right now. If you played it back in the day, I hope this was a fun trip down memory lane for you. A nice uh, nostalgia piece. And of course, I hope you all enjoyed the unboxing of the battle chest as well. Uh, like I said, this is a somewhat self-indulgent video, but, uh, you know, sometimes you gotta do that. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I hope you did too. And I look very forward to having you back here next time. Farewell for now, my friends.